Day two of the 2014 Generation Adidas Cup comes your way from Frisco, Texas. A much better day for weather today. It is warmer and less windy, and a very good day for soccer as well. Five games already in the books in the championship division of the Generation Adidas Cup. The sixth one is a big one. Real Salt Lake and Stoke City both turned in impressive performances in winning their openers yesterday. Both teams come in at 1-0 in the tournament in Group B battling with the LA Galaxy and Toronto FC. Three groups of four teams each in this tournament. The three group winners advance to Friday's semifinals. One second place team will join them. Everybody else plays the consolation rounds, the placement rounds over the weekend. In the openers yesterday, Stoke City beat the LA Galaxy 2-0 behind a goal and an assist from the birthday boy, the right back, Lewis Banks, who had his birthday on Sunday, had a goal and an assist on Monday. Not his normal forte, but a very good performance in that 2-0 win. They only brought 14 players who are eligible to compete in the tournament, one of whom was red carded. So they've got 13 players, only two subs available today, including the backup goalkeeper. Real Salt Lake, on the other hand, took on Toronto FC. Very impressive in jumping out to a 2-0 lead. Goals from Josh Dowdy and Sebastian Saucedo giving them a 2-0 lead, holding on for the 2-1 win. So those two teams both 1-0 in Group B play. Earlier today, the LA Galaxy came from behind to beat Toronto 2-1, so LA also has three points in the standings. The winner tonight will have a big edge, of course, but neither team can lock up a spot for sure in the semifinals with a win tonight because we still could end up with three teams at 2-1 in Group B. We'll give you the scores and the standings from around the tournament throughout the evening. We welcome those of you watching around Real Salt Lake country in the mountain time zone. And we welcome those of you staying up late with us in the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us. Real Salt Lake and Stoke City set to battle on day two of the Generation Adidas Cup here at the Toyota Stadium Complex just outside of Dallas. There's the whistle, here we go. Day two for the tournament, game two for both of these teams. Stoke City in the familiar red and white stripes, white shorts, white socks, attacking north to south toward Main Street Frisco. Real Salt Lake in the claret and cobalt going south to north. Give you the starting lineups as we go along. First for Real Salt Lake, the goalkeeper Stands six foot six. Christian Herrera starts in net for Real Salt Lake. He was there as well yesterday in the win over Toronto. The back four right to left. Aaron Herrera at right back. Justin Glad and Miles Stray, the center backs. Justin Glad has already signed a professional deal with Real Salt Lake. We'll join them later this year, but we'll continue playing with the academy likely through the playoffs later this summer. And the left back is Gavino Carranza, as this one sent out for a Real Salt Lake goal kick. The holding midfielders, Danilo Acosta and Fito Ovalle. The attacking midfielders, Sebastian Saucedo on the right, Evan Waldrop in the middle, Diego Silva on the left, and Josh Dowdy, the main man up front for Real Salt Lake. So again, it's a 4-2-3-1 formation the way we see it. Herrera in goal, Herrera, Glad, Stray, and Carranza at the back. Acosta, Ovalle, and Waldrop in the middle. 
Saucedo Silva attacking outside and Dowdy, the man up front. This is Gavino Carranza getting forward on the left to Real Salt Lake. Loses the ball out of bounds. And it's a throw in to Stoke City. For Stoke, Tommy Deitch gets the start in goal. Still only 15, he just turned 15. And he recently got his second call up to England's under 16 national team training camp. So they see a bright future for Deitch. The back four has Lewis Banks on the right. We told you had a goal and an assist both on or around corner kicks yesterday. The center backs, Josh Williams and Theo Vassell. And the left back is Toby Wells. Expected to be a 4-4-2. A diamond midfield of sorts. John Villeneuve Pringle, who left yesterday's game injured and is on the ball right now, is the right midfielder. Tried to drop that one, couldn't get a clean touch to it. And the ball runs out of bounds for a Stoke throw in. Daniel Jarvis and Ollie Shenton, the central midfielders. Jarvis will sit deeper. And Theo Brerley on the left. There's a cross by Banks, runs past everybody, tracked down on the far side of the field. And Real Salt Lake will try and build out of the back. The forwards for Stoke City, the Belgium youth international, Julianne Ngoy, who has all the headlines you could ever want as a 16-year-old, but still trying to develop with this Stoke youth setup. And Charles Weston Hales, it was very impressive and scored the second goal for Stoke yesterday in the 2-0 win over the LA Galaxy. So again, Deitch in goal, Banks, Williams, Vassell, and Wells at the back. Rene Pringle, Jarvis, Shenton, and Brerley in the middle. And Goy and Weston Hales up front for Stoke. And they're only two subs, we might as well introduce you to them as well. The backup goalkeeper, Chris Marquis, and Tyron Hamilton. I'm Jonathan Yardley, glad you could join us for day two of the Generation Adidas Cup here in Frisco, Texas. Fourth minute, no score, just underway between Real Salt Lake and Stoke City. There's Shenton laying the ball off, wide on the left for Brerley. Back to Shenton. And it's broken up in the middle of the field. There's Dowdy holding it up to Waldrip for Real Salt Lake. Feeding Saucedo, racing forward on the right. And it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Stoke City. Okay, that is because uh, I'm putting I'm trying to give my staff finalized for tomorrow. Generation Adidas Cup, Major League Soccer's under 17 championship. It's been contested in some form all the way back to 2007. Has had a couple of different names over the years. This is the first time international teams have competed. Stoke City here. Flamengo from Brazil is here after their flight was canceled. And Chivas Guadalajara is here as well. Long ball for Dowdy. Gets to the end line. No, he couldn't keep it in. It'll be a goal kick for Stoke City. Flamengo had its flight canceled. Got here at 7 this morning. Took the field at 4 o'clock and was very impressive in the process. They ended up giving up a late goal to the Seattle Sounders and then losing the shootout. So not a good start in the standings, but Flamengo was very impressive. Chivas Guadalajara has fared less well. Charles Weston Hales battling for it. Herrera dives, doesn't hold the ball, and it's knocked into the net. Stoke City gets the lead in just the sixth minute. And it's a great start for one of those foreign clubs, Julian Ngoy, the finish after Charles Weston Hales had wreaked all kind of havoc on the Real Salt Lake back line. Herrera dove for the ball, couldn't hold it. And Stoke City with the early lead. They scored twice yesterday in the second half to beat the LA Galaxy. They get on the board early. That's the earliest goal of the tournament, bar one. San Jose did score in the second minute earlier today. And this goal coming in the sixth minute. Stoke City won, Real Salt Lake nothing. And again, Weston Hales chasing a long ball created problems for the Real Salt Lake defense. And you thought Herrera had snuffed it out when he dove at the feet of Charles Weston Hales, but he didn't hold on to the ball. And the first one to the rebound was Julian Ngoy, the Belgium youth international. 
And that pass was picked off by Gavino Carranza for Real Salt Lake. Here's Justin Glad, recently signed as a homegrown player by Real Salt Lake. He's out of Tucson, Arizona. We saw him in preseason. Several of these players were in preseason with Real Salt Lake. And we saw Glad get into a game in Tucson, which had to be a thrill in front of friends and family, and now signed by Real Salt Lake. Salt Lake's homegrown territory includes Arizona, and this team is based out of their residential academy in Casa Grande, Arizona. So they can sign players from Utah and Arizona if they meet the homegrown player criteria. If they live outside those regions, Real Salt Lake is limited to eight exceptions for players who come from elsewhere. Jordan Allen, their recent signing, is out of Rochester, New York, an example of one of those. So eighth minute, Stoke City out to the early lead. Flag is up at the near sideline. I was waiting for that, and there's another throw into Real Salt Lake. Throw in, knocked out of. Uh, it's knocked out of bounds for a throw in, and correctly awarded to Stoke City after a slight pause. Second of three games in group play, Real Salt Lake. We'll finish up with the LA Galaxy on Thursday. And Stoke City will finish up against Toronto FC, which looked in control for much of the game against the LA Galaxy earlier today, but a couple of substitutions of key attacking players then produced both goals for the Galaxy in a span of about five minutes, and LA won that one 2-1, two one, so Toronto is 0-2. Long-range shot and runs wide of the net, and the goalkeeper, Deitch, he didn't get a touch. So it'll be a goal kick, but Real Salt Lake trying to open things up from deep right there. Another goal kick for Deitch. We told you he just turned 15 in January. He's been with Stoke since he was nine. And part of the English youth national team setup. They've also got a player, part of the Welsh youth national team, Tom Shepard, but he's suspended today after he was sent off for a second yellow card late in the game against LA. He should be eligible on Thursday. And again, Stoke could use it. They only have 14 players eligible to play in this competition. Long ball, and again, Real Salt Lake's back line struggling to deal with it. That was Stray getting it away to Carranza. It was a similar play to the one on which Stoke scored earlier. And Carranza and Diego Silva not on the same page there, head in his hands for Diego Silva. This Real Salt Lake group, very successful. First place in the Southwest Division of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy this season with a 17-2-2 record. I say first in points per game. They did trail the LA Galaxy by one point in the pure standings. And they'll play LA, as we mentioned, on Thursday in this tournament. And then in league play on April 26th, that's the return engagement, they lost at LA in October. So chance for two chances for revenge for Real Salt Lake here. Last year, this same age group was part of a championship squad at the U16 level for Real Salt Lake. Four players were starters as that giveaway by Deitch ends up with a fairly tame shot that he's able to handle. Justin Glad, Fito Ovalle, Sebastian Saucedo, and Diego Silva all started in the U.S. Soccer Championship game last summer, in which Real Salt Lake won 4-2 against Solar, a club from the Dallas area. Good. 
tried to find Waldrop with that throw, but his touch lets him down, and it's a throw in for Lewis Banks. And a great left footed volley after a corner was knocked around the penalty area yesterday, and then headed a corner kick back across goal for Weston Hales to tap in for the Stokes second. He moves by Ovalle in the middle of the field for Real Salt Lake. Couple of cutbacks, shot coming by Saucedo over the top. Real Salt Lake's leading scorer with 19 in the regular season and RSL starting to heat up, three shots, trying to test Deitch since Stoke City opened the scoring in just the sixth minute. We're playing two 35 minute halves. Those are the rules of the tournament. With all the games fit into such a short amount of time, it's a few minutes shorter than the normal length. They play 40 minutes in Development Academy play. Five substitutions allowed for each team with no re-entry as Weston Hales bends it low, looking for Ngoy, and Christian Herrera dives to hold it in the six yard penalty, six yard box. So five subs for each team, no re-entry. Of course, Stoke only has two substitutes available. Dowdy chasing this long ball, and Deitch slides to cover up for Stoke. And again, the tournament cutoff for birthdays was January 1st, 1997. Anybody born in 97 or later eligible, there's been a couple of exceptions given. That's Jarvis turning on the ball in the midfield for Stoke. Now Banks, the right back. Looking for Weston Hales, really good with his back to goal and good footwork. He had both on display against RSL yesterday. Justin Glad, the new Real Salt Lake signing, trying to deal with him. And it's knocked out for a Stoke throw in. Set it back. Ali Shenton fouled by Danilo Acosta, the corner of the penalty area. And we have free kick to Stoke City. Shenton, one of the older players for Stoke, he's actually a 96, and he's already been signed to stay at Stoke, where he's been since 2004. He's been up with the under 18s. Most of these players in the Stoke squad come from their under 16 ranks before they've really gone full time as a scholar with the club. So it'll be the left foot of Shenton facing a four man, Real Salt Lake Wall. Ollie Shenton hits it top corner, missed it wide. Looks up to the sky. It wasn't a bad effort. And it goes wide of Christian Herrera's goal. Herrera from Las Cruces, New Mexico. One of three goalkeepers called into camp recently for the United States under 18s. Along with JT Marcinkowski from San Jose, who we saw yesterday. And he couldn't reach that one. It's tough when you're six foot six to have anything be out of your reach, but had it been on goal, he might have had it covered. Aaron Herrera was under pressure there and rarely tried to win it for Stoke. He's on the ball now. Drops it off for Wells. Cross is deflected. Justin Glad deals with it for Real Salt Lake. Tries to go upfield and finds Saucedo. Miles Stray knocks that one out. It'll be a throw into Stoke City on the far side of the field. 16th minute. Out of two 35-minute first halves, as you see the Portland Timbers in the background over there watching this one. There's Ngoy breaking into the penalty area onto his left foot, and he missed it wide into the side netting. It took a deflection. It'll be a corner kick for Stoke City. Ngoy has been quiet, except when breaking into the box. Just to have a nose for the ball around the penalty area. He didn't do a whole lot yesterday. Came on as a sub against LA. As you look at Charles Weston Hales, who's a big guy, but next to Herrera, 
looks anything but. Here's a look back at Ngoy trying to break into the penalty area. And Justin Glad getting a piece of that ball. Justin Glad dealing with that corner kick as well. He got out of the way. Here's Saucedo on the run. Real Salt Lake counterattack is on. Diego Silva takes himself wide with that touch. Drops it off for Waldrop. And Silva was offside coming back to the play in what looked like a promising counterattack for Real Salt Lake. Fizzled out there. Ngoy, who again who scored the goal and had the chance a moment ago for Stoke City. He'd been linked with some big clubs. When Stoke signed him, they were talking Real Madrid, Manchester City, and some of the other big names had been looking at him. Obviously at 16, you don't know how that's going to pan out, but certainly clubs expressed interest. He's got a sprinter speed, we're told. And certainly big enough. As Glad wins the header over in Goy there. And again, he's played internationally for Belgium. Actually born in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, I believe, but raised in Belgium. Through ball here, looking for Saucedo, trying to run past Wells, gets a forearm and play on from the officials, much to the consternation of the Real Salt Lake bench. Knee work by Silva to step in and intercept that pass. Wall drip up the middle for Real Salt Lake. This is the last game of the day. Everybody else is done, and a lot of teams have stuck around to watch it. Last night it was too cold. Everybody went home and I'm told watch the stream, so we may have lost a few viewers, but we've certainly gained for in-stadium atmosphere here. We're at the soccer complex adjoining Toyota Stadium, where they do have soccer tonight. The FC Dallas Reserves taking on Oklahoma City in USL Pro Action. But a lot of the youth teams electing to watch their compatriots, and I'm sure in some cases watching what they expect to be future opponents. Here's Weston Hale's chance to shoot. Right footed low. Kick save by Herrera. It runs back to Shenton. Trying to get onto that left. Clips it in, but nobody there at the back post. So you saw Weston Hale's. Danger there. Shenton making the good attacking run forward for Stoke. Again, he's one of the older players, actually a 96, and put in that attacking midfield role. Twentieth minute, Stoke City one, Real Salt Lake nothing. This is Rene Pringle. Now Josh Williams goes all the way back to the goalkeeper, Deitch. Upfield kept in by Carranza, battling with Weston Hales. Good use of his body. Something we've seen already from him a lot in these two days of the tournament. The left back, Wells, for Stoke City. Shenton is well offside, and Miles Strait deals with it, so we play on. Rene Pringle and Silva battling. We go back to the chance earlier by Charles Weston Hales. Again, he scored the second goal for Stoke. Had a chance to score the second goal here today. Blasted it low, and Christian Herrera able to knock it away with his feet. It was yesterday that Weston Hales scored the second goal in the win over L.A. Here's another chance for Saucedo. Let's it go, and Deitch palms it around the post. Sebastian Saucedo, the leading scorer for Real Salt Lake. Dangerous there. And it'll be the first corner kick of the game for Real Salt Lake. If you look at Tommy Deitch, marshalling the Stoke City defense, Saucedo will take the corner. Bounces low at the near post. Justin Glad able to win it back for Real Salt Lake. Saucedo, nice dance footwork around one, plays it low through the six, and it runs all the way out on the far side of the field. And it actually runs out for a throw-in. Here's the chance that led to the corner kick. Saucedo ripping it at the near post, and Deitch diving to his left. 
Stoke City with a throw in deep in its own end. Blasted upfield where Carranza heads it down into the middle, picked up by Renee Pringle. Long ball in the direction of Ngoy, battling with Miles Stray, who's been under challenge from Stoke City today, and in the end it rolls to Christian Herrera, but they've really kind of seen that channel as a danger spot. Whether it's been Weston Hales or Ngoy, they've tried to play through Miles Stray. Carranza in the left corner, battling with Renee Pringle, knocks it out, should be a corner kick for Real Salt Lake, and it is. There's a look at Johnville Rene Pringle. He's played for the under 18s. He's a first year scholar, his second year with Stoke. After signing from Leighton Orient. There's Carranza, the left back. And Saucedo will take the corner from this side as well. Again, not really good enough at the near post. And glad it was able to keep it alive for Real Salt Lake. Salcedo showing some good footwork, but not able to get the cross in. Now gives it, gives it away. Ali Shenton breaking forward. And was pulled off the ball by Silva. No foul called on the play. And it'll be a Real Salt Lake throw in. Shenton felt like he got hit in the back of the head. He's still talking about it with our referee. Second day of the Generation Adidas Cup. Nine MLS teams, three invited foreign teams competing in the international division, competing for the tournament title. Eight teams playing what amount to consolation games in the domestic division. MLS teams were involved in qualifying. This goes back to last fall. And they won't play to a championship per se, but they will play five games this week, as will each team. The footwork by Ovalle tries a shot that's blocked. It was going well wide anyway. And Stoke City tried to go the other way. Miles Stray dealt with that one well for Salt Lake. <laughs> Saucedo again, so active, tried to slip that one through for Dowdy, and it was broken up by Vassell and Williams in the center of that Stoke defense. Now a foul and a free kick to Stoke. Okay. Real Salt Lake has generally been one of the more successful teams in the Generation Adidas Cup. They beat DC United on penalty kicks to take the title back in 2008, finished third in 2009, and lost to DC United on penalty kicks in 2010, which is one of the more entertaining shootouts I've ever seen. Had the chance to see that one in Houston. Surprisingly, they've struggled the last two tournaments, 2011 and 2012, even while their residential academy program has gotten better and better. One, one by Banks to Weston Hales. Shenton was on his less preferred right foot and couldn't direct that one. Really near the target, Herrera collects on the end line for Real Salt Lake. Stray battling with Ngoy and trying to get some help there, but it comes to Stoke anyway. They play it through looking for Weston Hales, Christian Herrera. Read it and dealt with it. Diego Silva battling with John Phil Rene Pringle, and I think they each gave as good as they got that time. Free kick won by Acosta for Real Salt Lake. Here's Waldrop with a switch for Saucedo. Dribbling against Wells. Saucedo to the end line, tries to play it across, and it's too far for Silva. And it'll run out in the corner for a throw in. As you see, some of the Stoke brain trust. I asked him if he had a message for anybody watching back in the United Kingdom, and he was not optimistic of anyone staying up late to watch this one. Maybe they'll check it out archived on Wednesday morning. He said to say hello if, if anybody is, and certainly seemed like he would be quite impressed. 
Glad whistled for a foul to be a free kick to Stoke City. 27th minute, Stoke 1, Real Salt Lake nothing. The goal coming in the 6th minute, courtesy of Julian and Goy. Firing in from the top of the box after Charles Weston Hales had wreaked havoc on Real Salt Lake's back line with his physical play. And I say that in the best way. He really uses his body well. Look at him here, holding off Carranza. And has good footwork with a man on his back. Weston Hales doesn't turn 17 until July. Another first year guy at Stoke. He's from Lewisham. Ovaye in the midfield for Salt Lake to Waldrick. And they switch it well for Diego Silva. He's out of Provo, so he's from Utah. Again, goes to the Residential Academy in Arizona. Ovalle to Saucedo. Tried to dance onto his right foot. It was deflected out to Aaron Herrera. Now they try and play a 1-2. It's cleared away. Justin Glad keeps possession for RSL. Looking through for Silva, and Banks got a touch to it. Goalkeeper Deitch alertly used his feet just in case that had been considered intentional. And Real Salt Lake putting on some pressure here late in the first half. And two 35-minute halves, the order of play in this tournament. Long-range blast well over the top off the left foot of Danilo Acosta. He's from Sandy, Utah. Plenty of Utahns on the roster, despite maybe a perception that residency brings in players from all over, and it certainly does, but Ovalle is from Leighton, Utah. Saucedo's from Park City. Acosta from Sandy, of course, where Rio Tinto Stadium is. Diego Silva from Provo. And then Arizona also considered homegrown territory for Real Salt Lake, so a number of players who come from Arizona as well. Great footwork there by Saucedo. Plays it in left-footed, and Deitch knocked it away. Out for another corner kick. That's some of the best footwork we've seen in the tournament from Sebastian Saucedo. You can see why he's so highly rated and plays for the U.S. at the U18 level. He'll take the corner as well, the third for Real Salt Lake. This one gets into the area and is headed away by Vassell. up to Aaron Herrera for Real Salt Lake. Silva tried to knock it backward, gave it away to Rene Pringle. And he tried to find Ollie Shenton, but his pass was behind him. And you can see Weston Hales and Ngoy kind of hang their heads, wanting the chance to run there. Ngoy knocks that one out. It'll be a throw in to Real Salt Lake on the right. Sebastian Saucedo has been the most dangerous player for Real Salt Lake. Look at that footwork. That's big big league stuff. And he fired with the left foot. Deitch able to punch it away. I don't know the name of that particular trick, but it's a good one. About five minutes to go till halftime here at the Generation Adidas Cup. Day two. Glad you could join us for our second game. We'll have the New York Red Bulls and the Brazilian club Flamengo, both of whom have been very impressive on Thursday night at 9 Eastern. Friday we'll have both semifinals from Toyota Stadium, 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern. The start times on Friday and then Sunday morning we'll have the Generation Adidas Cup title game at noon Eastern also from the stadium. Weston Hales fouled at the edge of the penalty area. Glad thought it was soft. Stoke wanted a penalty kick, so neither side ends up all that happy about it. Didn't look very malicious. Glad standing stock still, saying, what was I supposed to do? As Weston Hales gets to his feet. It's going to be a penalty, I beg your pardon, a free kick, obviously not a penalty, from the edge of the area. Toby Wells, the left back, has come over and taken responsibility from Shenton. 
who shot and missed wide with the last look. Three in the wall for Real Salt Lake. Wells the left footed option. Banks the righty. It's Toby Wells over the wall and just missed it wide again. And took a deflection off the wall. In the corner for Stoke, the Potter's second. Here's a look back at it. Both outside backs standing over the ball. Banks ran over it. Wells hit it and Josh Doughty got a piece of it in the wall to lead to the corner kick. They take the corner short. Back to Jarvis. Deep back heel to find Shenton onto that left. They get it back to Shenton. To Jarvis. Are you kidding me? I felt pretty confident that was a Real Salt Lake throw in. And Diego Silva agreed with me, but it's been given to Stoke City. Thirty-third minute here in Frisco, Stoke City leading on a six-minute goal from Julien Ngoy. That one played into the box, looking for Shen. Gets on his left, tried to curl it, and it took a deflection yet again. And it'll be the third corner for Stoke. Shots are six-six in my book. Real Salt Lake has forced three saves out of Tommy Deitch. Christian Herrera with two stops and obviously the difference in the game in Goy's blast in minute six. So Jarvis to take this corner as well. Going back post, Herrera froze. It comes to Shenton onto his right, plays it across. Headed down. And Goy tries a spin move and Real Salt Lake clears it in a no-nonsense manner from Glad and Stray. Again, both these teams come in 1-0. and The LA Galaxy in the same group at 1-1. One one. Toronto FC 0-2. So the winner of this game will be in very good position to advance to Friday. But again, can't clinch that. Lewis Banks is going to be yellow carded here for time wasting. I'm a little incredulous. There's some history to that. The referee had warned him on the previous throw in down in the attacking half about moving more quickly to take the throw in. I don't honestly think he was uh, time wasting there, but the call's been made. First yellow card of the game. Players are suspended if they pick up three yellow cards in the tournament. Neat one-touch movement there by Real Salt Lake to get out of trouble and find Waldrop in the middle of the field. Ovalle, Saucedo, broken up by Rene Pringle, and then he gets fouled. And it'll be a free kick to Real Salt Lake in first half stoppage time. Stoke City sideline discussing things with the fourth official. Rather vehemently, I might say. You see Ovalle and Saucedo, who both trained with the Real Salt Lake first team in Utah last summer and in preseasons, although Saucedo was hurt this preseason. Rather, Ovalle was hurt. So first half stoppage time, Real Salt Lake. One more chance to tie it up before the break. Chipped in by Saucedo, headed away. Chased down by Glad, it'll be a throw in for Salt Lake.
Costa plays it across, broken up there by Brerley, and knocked up field. Miles Stray cleans up for Real Salt Lake. And there's the halftime whistle. We were waiting for it. And it does finally come after Real Salt Lake had played out the free kick. Stoke City grabbed an early lead in just the sixth minute. Julian and Goy powering one in from the top of the area after Christian Herrera had knocked the ball away from the feet of Charles Westonhales. That has Stoke City in front. Not for lack of trying by Real Salt Lake and Sebastian Saucedo late in the first half. And both teams dealing with the officials right now as they come off. We've, we've heard plenty of people uh, yelling at the officials, but we haven't seen a whole lot of overt confrontations. And you can see there, it's now just Stoke City staff, but it were people from both teams talking to the officiating crew at the half. Stoke City 1, Real Salt Lake nothing. We'll take a 10-minute break. Come back with second half action right here on MLSsoccer.com. The score at the half, Stoke 1, RSL nothing.
back here at the soccer complex at Toyota Stadium, Frisco, Texas, getting ready for the start of the second half. On day two of the Generation Adidas Cup, Stoke City leading Real Salt Lake 1-0 as we get set for the final 35 minutes of this one, two 35-minute halves, and one change so far at the halftime interval. We'll tell you about it shortly. And here we go, Real Salt Lake in the Clarendon Cobalt, attacking left to right, north to south toward Main Street Frisco. Stoke City in the red and white stripes, navy blue numbers, white shorts, and white socks going south to north, right to left. Real Salt Lake brings in Tate Schmidt off the bench, 16-year-old from Phoenix. And he's in there at right attacking midfielder. Sebastian Saucedo switches over to the left-hand side. And I'm still trying to figure out everything else uh, that may have gone on as in where Diego Silva might be playing, but we'll get to that. That's Schmidt involved right there for Real Salt Lake, and he comes away with the ball. Waldrop, now the right back, Aaron Herrera. Stoke City in front on the goal in the sixth minute from Julien Ngoy, the Belgium Youth International. Real Salt Lake. Had some good chances in that first half and just listening in a little bit on the halftime talks as you get a look at Aaron Herrera. The main message from Martin Vasquez to Real Salt Lake at halftime was you're giving them too much space. They have too much space to do everything. And so we'll see if Real Salt Lake players can take that to heart. You kind of see them swarming around the ball already in the opening stages of this second half. And you see Diego Silva is at left back. So it was the left back, Gavino Carranza, who came out at halftime for the attacking player, Tate Schmidt. But the, certainly the confidence level was high on the Real Salt Lake sideline, despite the one nothing deficit. Second day of the tournament, most teams have played two games by now, again, due to Flamengo's flight getting canceled. There is a makeup game tomorrow between Flamengo and the Colorado Rapids. But we can update you on the standings and where teams sit in them, who they've got left in the tournament, trying to figure out who the four semifinalists will be on Friday night. This is Theo Vassell trying to go forward, knocked away by Schmidt for Real Salt Lake. Chance to break, and Schmidt mishit his cross. Right to the goalkeeper, Deitch, who Gets the time wasting started early. In Group A, the New York Red Bulls lead it with five points. Dramatic come from behind tie yesterday in a shootout win against Seattle, and then a one nothing win over the Colorado Rapids today, which was much more dominating than the scoreline would indicate. So New York 1-0-1 in first place. Seattle has tied both games, scoring late to tie Flamengo today and then winning the shootout, which got him an extra point in the standings. They're at three points. Flamengo, of course, on one point after losing the shootout, and Colorado with none after losing its opening game. Saucedo whistled for a foul there. He was trying to spin with the ball, but caught Jarvis high on the shin. And there's a foul against the RSL man who's getting a talking to right now. So that's Group A, and New York's last game is against Flamengo, and it's likely that a tie would get New York through. The Red Bulls have looked pretty good so far, but not all that dangerous offensively. Good holding the ball. Chris Flores has both goals for the Red Bulls in the tournament, their left midfielder. In Group B, we've already pretty much given you the situation. RSL and Stoke playing right here, both 1-0, as Silva races forward on the left and drops it off for Saucedo. LA Galaxy Lost to Stoke City 2-0 yesterday. We're down 1-0 in the second half to Toronto today, but came back to win 2-1. Great counter-attacking goal from Dylan Smith. Provided the second goal. And they're very much alive in this tournament with their last game against their rival, Real Salt Lake. Here's Waldrop in the corner. Brings it back out for Schmidt. That one played across, hit Vassell in the shoulder off the foot of Ovalle. And Real Salt Lake still with it. 
See them really trying to up the pressure early in the second half. Saucedo to Dowdy trying to turn. Back heel for Saucedo. Fires high. Yet another chance for Sebastian Saucedo, and he just can't beat Tommy Deitch so far tonight. Really bright opening five minutes of the second half from Real Salt Lake. Martin Vasquez wanted them to close down the space, and they have. And they've upped the activity on the offensive side of the ball as well. Waldrop tried to get that one to Saucedo. It was picked off by Lewis Banks, the right back. That one headed away by Justin Glad, loose in the midfield. Jarvis kept it moving. This is Brerley, the left midfielder. Beg your pardon, that was Shenton. Brerley was on the inside. Schmidt inside to Waldrop, has Dowdy running ahead of him. He and Saucedo making the same run, and Saucedo is offside, tight call. It'll be a free kick to Real Salt Lake. He certainly was offside initially. It looked like a defender had dropped back behind him. As you get a chance to look back at the movement that led to the chance from Saucedo a minute ago. Everything right. Just fired over. Waldrop looked on as Stray got undercut there. And the foul was called against Weston Hales. Miles Stray battling physically with both Stoke forwards all game. Not happy about the way that play was handled. Substitution coming for Stoke City. They only have one field player they're really available to bring on. It's going to be Kyron Hamilton. Coming on, Julian Ngoy, the goal scorer, comes off after 43 minutes. Or 42 minutes, 43 officially. But he's got the goal that has Stoke in front, 1-0. That came back in the sixth minute. Real Salt Lake has come out, fired up here in the second half, trying to get back in the game. John Vilverne Pringle broke that one up, then took a tumble, but Real Salt Lake still on the defense. And Kyron Hamilton just into the game is fouled. It'll be a free kick to Stoke City. Jonathan Yardley with you from Frisco, Texas, day two of the 2014 Generation Adidas Cup. Nine MLS teams, three international clubs. They'll play three group games each, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, plus the makeup game Wednesday. And then the semifinals Friday night. There will be consolation games if you don't qualify. We'll have the semifinals over in the Toyota Stadium main field. Two games there Friday, MLS game, FC Dallas against Toronto FC on Saturday, and then the Generation Adidas Cup final on Sunday. Busy stretch for the stadium, which is hosting an FC Dallas Reserves game tonight. Silva tried to play inside through Acosta. Stoke broke it up, but Miles Stray has it at the back for Real Salt Lake. That's Aaron Herrera looking for Schmidt. Toby Wells on his back, forced him backward. This is Ovalle. Justin Glad chipping long, looking for Silva, who loves to race forward from that left back spot. Ball falls to Saucedo. Missed touch in the midfield. Weston Hales comes away with it for Stoke, but it's given away by Jarvis. Forward looking for Dowdy with his back to goal. He couldn't hold it up, though. Well done by Theo Vassell, the center back for Stoke. 
Been with Stokes since the age of nine as well. Former forward. We saw he likes to get forward yesterday, but really a solid figure at center back for Stoke as this one runs out for a Real Salt Lake goal kick. Stoke one, Real Salt Lake nothing on this Tuesday night, day two of the Generation Adidas Cup. Full moon overhead as Kyron Hamilton moves forward for Stoke City. Layoff coming, shot coming, and it's blocked by Herrera, the right back, defending desperately. As uh, we tried to give you a scenic shot there, and of course we got a scoring chance right after. That's, that's how things work. And this one's knocked up into the stands for a Real Salt Lake throw-in. Good crowd on hand for this one. Most of the teams have stuck around for the second half. Teams that were involved in action earlier, some in the consolation bracket, some in the international division or championship bracket. Watching what I feel are two of the stronger teams in the tournament, certainly based on their day one performance. And they're battling in Group B with the LA Galaxy and Toronto FC. And to finish out the standings, we'll tell you about Group C. FC Dallas won a penalty kick shootout against the San Jose Earthquakes today. So Dallas has five points after beating Philadelphia yesterday. Philadelphia beat Chivas Guadalajara 1-0 on an early goal from Derek Amani Ampong heading in a corner kick. So Chivas took the shootout win yesterday over San Jose. Has the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, so technically Chivas Guadalajara is third right now. San Jose, very unfortunate, is fourth despite outplaying Chivas last night and leading much of the game today against FC Dallas. San Jose scored in the second minute on a scramble. Basically a mosh pit. It was a typical San Jose goal in some ways. And FC Dallas tied it from a corner kick in the second half. Substitution in the 47th minute. Evan Waldrop comes out and Leo Fuchs comes in for Real Salt Lake. Fuchs, a 17-year-old from Highland, Utah, helped Lehigh High School to the state 5A final last year. Waldrop set up the opening goal for Real Salt Lake yesterday in their 2-1 win over Toronto FC. And the foul whistled against Stoke City there, much to the displeasure of the Stoke bench. There's Fuchs. There's Saucedo dealing with pressure again. Great footwork. Haven't seen a college commitment for him yet, but you know it's coming. Through ball really wasn't hit the way he wanted it, and it's out of the reach of Herrera. See that one kind of bobble up right as Acosta tried to play it through. So Tommy Deitch will restart for Stoke City, and he'll probably take his time doing it. 49th minute, never too early to stop wasting time in a 70 minute game. Stoke City 1, Real Salt Lake nothing. Hey, you got to man into the game at the uh, younger levels too. No problem with it. Fuchs tried to play that one through, and it runs out for a Stoke City throw in. Wells, the left back, hasn't been warned yet. He's trotting over to get the ball. They throw forward for Charles Weston Hales. Stray tried to deal with it. Now Justin Glad steps forward. Toby Wells steps forward the other way for Stoke City. Jarvis with a good switch there to Brerley. He's over on the right, and Renee Pringle has come more central in this half. Kyron Hamilton playing wide left, and I think it's more of the 4-2-3-1 look that we saw from Stoke yesterday with 
Renee Pringle and Jarvis sitting behind Shenton in the middle of the field. Miles Stray deals with that one, and it was kept in on the far sideline. Very well done by Real Salt Lake. Ovalle on the ball, head up to Saucedo. Diego Silva getting forward on the left. This is the Real Salt Lake Martin Vazquez wanted to see. Back to Saucedo, and it was out of his reach. Kyron Hamilton tries to switch out of trouble, but didn't hit it properly. And it'll be a throw in to Real Salt Lake. 50 minutes gone, 20 minutes to play in Frisco, Texas, with Stoke City leading Real Salt Lake 1 0. Real Salt Lake are going to feel like they've dominated the game. I've only got them up 8 6 in shots, but certainly this second half, it's been one way traffic. Saucedo was looking to play a 1 2 there. Jarvis broke it up for Stoke. There's John Villarene Pringle. And that's not the right call. Looked uh, pretty clear from here that that tackle was all ball. He may be calling an earlier foul, though, actually, given the uh, placement of the free kick. I gotta say, being a referee at a youth tournament does not seem like the most enjoyable job in the world. They've been taking a lot of grief, much of it misguided, some of it uh, deserved, but not much of it in the uh, two days of the tournament so far. Extra ball on the field on the far side, and the goalkeeper Herrera deals with it. He played a perfect one hop bounce pass into the scoreboard. Long ball looking for Schmidt, breaks into the area, has two across, plays it low, and Dowdy knocks it over the top. It was bouncing and bobbling, and it was a tough chance for Josh Dowdy. Charging in, he's already got one goal in the tournament. Here's a look at it. As Schmidt, one substitute, tried to play it across, and again, he didn't really get what he wanted on that. Silva was at the back post as well. Now Fuchs has gone in up front, and that's dropped Dowdy into an attacking midfield spot for Real Salt Lake. So the attacking players, Saucedo on the left, Dowdy in the middle, Schmidt on the right for Real Salt Lake with Ovalle and Acosta in the middle. Glad hits one long, looking for Schmidt. Second ball falls to Renee Pringle. Blocked by Schmidt, kept alive by Fuchs. Here goes Tate Schmidt. And Stoke City able to come away with it. Daniel Jarvis got it backward to Josh Williams. Stoke able to clear. Glad won the header, but right to Kyron Hamilton. We haven't seen much of him in the tournament. He wants to run here. And Aaron Herrera, the right back, stepped in well to win it for Real Salt Lake. Silva's instinct as a left back is to get the ball and bomb forward. Or wait till his team has the ball and then bomb forward. Real Salt Lake will make another change here. DJ Viegas going to come on. 17-year-old from Sacramento. And he replaces Danilo Acosta, who went off on the far side of the field. As Real Salt Lake looks to save time here. Viegas 
is a winger, and they're going to a 4-1-4-1 here with Dowdy and Saucedo in the middle. Dowdy plays it up to gut. Shot by Saucedo, blocked the rebound, fire to the top corner. Real Salt Lake has tied it. Leo Fuchs, 1-1. Leo Fuchs hit that like a rocket to the top corner. Real Salt Lake took out a defensive midfielder, put in an attacking midfielder, immediately paid off. Here's Dowdy, one of those attacking midfielders, playing it to Tate Schmidt, cutting across goal. Shot was deflected, fell right to Fuchs, who ripped it high into the net. And you can hear the belief chant from the far side of the field from a younger age group. Little flare up there between Weston Hales and an RSL player. That was a great moment. The whole RSL team running to the grandstand on the far side to celebrate with compatriots. There they are. Dallas Cup going on at the same time as our tournament, so a lot of teams have younger age group representatives here. We saw Seattle's, I think it was their under 15s here, cheering them on on this field at the four o'clock game today. So 1-1, Leo Fuchs, one of three second half subs for Real Salt Lake. With a goal he's gonna remember for a long time. Real Salt Lake would like to make it even more memorable if they can get a second, otherwise, could be headed to our second shootout in as many nights. Already had two today of the five earlier games. See what Real Salt Lake does formation-wise. If they stay 4-1, 4-1, or adjust. Here's Herrera, the right back, trying to get forward. He did slide and get a touch on the ball, but it runs out for a goal kick. Sebastian Saucedo, the most vocal of Real Salt Lake players right now, trying to take the lead. Looks like Dowdy may drop just a little deeper. But not much. Ovalle will be counted on to hold down that defensive midfield spot in front of the RSL back four. Julien Ngoy in the sixth minute started the score, story, scoring for Stoke. It's not that much of a tongue twister. Real Salt Lake has kept the pressure on and Leo Fuchs with a rocket in the 55th minute to tie the game. Here's Saucedo. The left back, Silva, looking to get forward as usual. Still on the ball, Diego Silva. And now he'll switch it to Herrera. We haven't called Christian Herrera's name almost at all in this second half. Josh Dowdy. Weston Hales has a little bit of work to do there. He was surrounded by three players. No, sir. No, sir. And Saucedo's touch got away from him. You could hear our referee saying, no, sir. You're not getting that call. Kyron Hamilton, he knows one speed, full speed. Chips it ahead for Weston Hales. Justin Glad over to deal with it. And he gladly ushers it out for a Stoke City throw-in. Let that be the first of many gladly puns made in his Real Salt Lake career. He's the sixth Real Salt Lake Academy player to be signed to a professional contract. Donnie Toya, who's now with Chivas USA, 
Nico Muniz, who only lasted a year and a half. Carlos Salcedo, who's done very well, just got called up to the Mexican squad that will eventually be their Olympic squad for 2016. Benji Lopez, who was signed last summer, is in his first full season. Jordan Allen, who spent one year at the University of Virginia, has already made his MLS debut this spring. And now Justin Glad, just signed on April 7th. Barely more than a week later. Playing with his buddies in Frisco. He's a long-term prospect, obviously. Can play center back, can play outside back, can even step into the midfield. He's on the ball right now. Ten minutes to play. Stoke City won. Real Salt Lake won from the Generation Adidas Cup. Long ball. A little bit of a push off there. They get away with it. Here's Silva breaking into the box. Silva's shot saved by Deitch at the near post. You could feel the anticipation from that group of Real Salt Lake folks on the far side. You could feel it from the bench on the near side as well. Silva wasn't able to get a whole lot on the shot. Here's Doughty. A touch put him in some trouble, and he wasn't able to keep it in. Flag is up. That'll be a throw. And here's a look back at the chance. And there was the bump. And Real Salt Lake got away with it, led to this scoring chance. Silva breaking in on his right foot. You can see he didn't get everything he wanted on the shot. Deitch able to knock it away. Free kick to Real Salt Lake at the halfway line. RSL wants to win this in regulation, make no mistake. They have been on the front foot for the entire second half. You got a Stoke team, doesn't have the ability to make many substitutions. They've only got two field player substitutes. One of them suspended, so today they only have one. This one shipped in our direction. Aaron Herrera on the ball. Neat turn by Schmidt. Here's Fuchs, the goal scorer, battling with the cell. Tried to go through his legs. In the end, it's out of bounds. Should be a goal kick, and the referees get it right as they have most of the game and most of the tournament. Christian Herrera, rare touch. The Real Salt Lake goalkeeper keeps it moving. Daniel Jarvis able to win a throw in there for Stoke. Here's Shenton trying to turn. Couldn't hold on to the ball. I would shudder to see the possession numbers for this second half. It'd be all Real Salt Lake. Long ball looking for Tate Schmidt, edge of the penalty area. Does well to get there. Into the path of Dowdy, bad angle. His shot is blocked out by Vassell. Real Salt Lake corner kick coming here and a little bit of anticipation growing. Tate Schmidt over to take the corner. Looks like Stoke defending zonally with two banks, one bank of four, one bank of three. Delivery looking for Glad. Falls to Jarvis, able to clear it, but right up the middle, still with Real Salt Lake. There's Glad, knocked off the ball by Shenton, but Glad able to win it back for the moment. That one given away to Weston Hales. 
who for once has some support. And Ovalle comes back, gets the ball, wins the challenge for Real Salt Lake. Fito Ovalle with a big tackle there. Long ball to Fuchs, nice layoff. They tried to get it back to him and Vassell interceded for Stoke. Kyron Hamilton on that left wing has Weston Hales in the box, Shenton in support. Hamilton cuts inside, Miles Stray dealt with it. Renee Pringle for Stoke. Switch for Brerley. And the offside flag is up pretty clearly there. On one of the few attacking chances for Stoke City in this second half. Five minutes and change to play in Frisco. Still 1-1. Leo Fuchs' second half goal has tied it up. Been a heck of a second half effort from Real Salt Lake. They were good in the first half, but they have been very good in the second. Lost a little bit of momentum here, but still have been pushing for the winning goal. Real Salt Lake again back in action on Thursday against the LA Galaxy. 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain. And at the same time, Stoke will be playing Toronto on adjacent fields. That will determine Group B, who advances to Friday night. And again, one second place team does advance. So even if this group ended up with three teams at two and one, likely two of those three would advance. They look for Schmidt again with the long ball. Battling with the left back, Wells, and apparently stayed in play. Miles Stray stands over Ollie Shenton for a moment after winning that header, emphatically. Herrera with a push off ahead of the header. And it'll be a free kick to Stoke, who I think would take the tie in the shootout at this point. Viegas gives it to Silva on the overlap. Breaking down the left, only Fuchs in front of him. Cutting back against the grain and John Bill Rene Pringle with a good tackle to win it. Start the other way for Stoke City. And he kept the ball in apparently. Long way away from us. No flag went up so we play on. Weston Hales, two around him, clears space and keeps the ball moving. That one given away by Williams at the back. Chip through, looking for Leo Fuchs again at the edge of the area, battling with Vassell. And Theo Vassell has his pocket picked by Fuchs. Those two still doing battle. It's a good 30 second mano a mano. And the foul goes in Stoke City's favor. And they, they even argue over the placement of the ball. Deitch not happy with himself after a missed kick on the restart. Two minutes left, plus stoppage time before we go to a shootout to decide the second point awarded in the game. Good first touch by Fuchs again, but Vassell still on him. Able to knock it away, and now Stray going to be whistled for a foul here against Weston Hales. And going to get a yellow card to boot in the 69th minute. Miles Stray still only 15. He doesn't turn 16 until May from Point Reyes, California. So a chance for
for Stoke to steal it with a late free kick. Kyron Hamilton to send it in. In the final minute of regulation, going back post. Kept alive. Weston Hales, Stoke City wins it in the final minute. Charles Weston Hales, one of the stars of the tournament, has a message for Real Salt Lake and Stoke City are gonna steal this one at the death. Charles Weston Hales used his body after the ball was kept alive and fire it low past Herrera. He has been a man among boys at times in this tournament. He scored the second goal. Yesterday he scores the second goal in dramatic fashion today. 2-1 Stoke City with only 12 players to work with tonight. Dominated for the entire second half by Real Salt Lake. And they come up with a free kick winner late. You feel for Real Salt Lake because they have owned this second half. And it's a Real Salt Lake throw in after the referee corrected himself. Knocked up into the stand toward the parking lot. And it may not be their tournament, right? It's an MLS championship tournament, but you could tell the emotion in these Stoke players feeling up against it, against uh, an American crowd today. And they lead 2-1 at the moment. Real Salt Lake trying to respond. Knocked high by Wells, the left back. Real Salt Lake chasing it, wanting to restart quickly. Saucedo takes it himself. I've got us in the third minute of stoppage time here. And there should be some. And maybe not a whole lot more than those three minutes. Glad plays it long, looking for Schmidt. It falls to Tate Schmidt in the area, cuts back. Tate Schmidt ties it up for Real Salt Lake. It crossed the line. RSL pulls it out, 2-2. Two, two. And look at what it means to them. What a finish! Tate Schmidt, three minutes into stoppage time. Real Salt Lake believes. And have a look at it again. This is gonna live on for Tate Schmidt and RSL. Stoke City players on the line were trying to clear it. And I said I wanted to see some smiles on the broadcast tonight. We got smiles and jubilation from Real Salt Lake after they tie it with a dramatic late goal. The game finishes tied. And we're going to a shootout to determine the extra point as the left back Toby Wells, who misjudged the initial ball, is still down after trying to defend that one. And I don't know if he's gonna be able to participate in the shootout or not. What a finish. Stoke City in the 70th minute from a free kick had what looked like a dagger in Real Salt Lake's tournament chances. And RSL got three minutes of stoppage time. Heaped it forward with a prayer. And Tate Schmidt, with a couple of nifty moves inside the penalty area, got just enough on his shot that it rolled over the line. What a finish. And the Stoke City players, who had been so demonstrative after taking the lead, equally frustrated now as we go to a shootout to determine an extra point in the standings. And it could very well be a big one 
with these two teams. Very impressive in wins yesterday. Were they to both win on Thursday as well? I'm not saying it's a sure thing by any stretch of the imagination, but were they to both win on Thursday, this shootout would wind up deciding who advanced as the group winner. There's a decent chance if that happened, both would advance with one as the top second place team as well, but there's a whole lot of soccer to be played before we get to that. We showed you that full moon and uh, it delivered on its promise tonight. Two goals in the final four minutes. And I don't think Stoke City, I do not think, I know Stoke City was not happy with how much stoppage time was played. The player tapping his watch and asking the assistant referee how much time. And there it is. Full moon over Frisco, Texas, and a full moon over a dramatic finish to our game. Real Salt Lake and Stoke City finish 2-2. Julian and Goy opened the scoring in the sixth minute for Stoke City. Real Salt Lake came out with really intense energy in the second half, tied the game on a goal from Leo Fuchs, dominated the entire second half. And Stoke City really up against it. Pulled one out in the 70th minute from a free kick. Kyron Hamilton played it in. The ball was headed back. And Charles Weston Hales fired it home to put Stoke City up 2-1. Looked like it was a winner. It was in the last minute. But there was just enough time in stoppage time for Real Salt Lake to pull one back through Tate Schmidt, also a second half substitute. The 16 year old out of Phoenix who came through with surely one of the biggest goals he scored for Real Salt Lake in the 73rd minute. Five round shootout to award an extra point. Each team's already got one. The winner of the shootout will get two and will top the group with five points after the second day of play. Foot six, Tommy Deitch. A little bit shorter. U.S. under 18 international on one side, England under 16 international on the other. And the first shooter for Real Salt Lake will be Sebastian Saucedo. Ya lo tienes, ya lo tienes en tu mente, Cristian. No hay nadie mejor que tú en este momento, mijo. No hay nadie mejor que tú. And they're checking on something. It might be because with the injury, Real Salt Lake should have to designate a player not to take a penalty, just as you would after a red card. Because Wells is not going to be able to shoot. referee and his linesman discussing this. So again, when a team gets a red card, it has fewer players, down to 10, so the opponent has to remove a player from its rotation to make the numbers equal so you would think Real Salt Lake would have to do likewise here and that's what Lewis Banks from Stoke City is telling the officials so Real Salt Lake should have to remove one player from uh, the field 
because he can't compete in the shootout. You have to have equal numbers available. That's my guess as to what's being discussed now. I don't know for sure, but I can't imagine what else would be discussed at this length. And now our official is going to confer with the fourth official. Two two the score in regulation, and what a finish it was! Charles Westenhale scoring in the last minute for Stoke City looked like Real Salt Lake was going to lose, and then with the support of a younger affiliate club on the one sideline, Real Salt Lake came up with one in the final minute of stoppage time to come away with a two two tie. So Real Salt Lake has all 11 players. I don't know how we sorted this one out. Sebastian Saucedo will start the shootout. Saucedo, right up the middle. Puts Real Salt Lake in front. And a little back and forth there. And he's got some love for the uh, hometown fans as well, I think. This is not easy being 16 and 1,500 miles from home and being booed by the locals, such as they are. It's Charles Westenhales, who asked for it, to be fair, by running toward that section after scoring the goal that put his team in front at the time. He's got two goals in the tournament, and he lines up the shootout attempt against Herrera. Weston Hales scores as well, 1-1 in the shootout. Tommy Deitch on the goal line for Stoke City. Tate Schmidt, who tied the game in stoppage time, steps up to his PK. Blasts it home, took a deflection off the trailing leg of Deitch. But straight up the middle, no problem for Tate Schmidt. Stoke City going aces first. They go with Weston Hales and now Shenton. Basically their two best attacking options. The wind has picked up here and Shenton making sure the ball stays on the spot. Ali Shenton for Stoke. Denied by Christian Herrera with a dive to his right. Didn't look like a bad penalty from Shenton, but Herrera at six foot six, all over it, diving to his right. Dowdy crossbar. Josh Dowdy, who scored the opener for Real Salt Lake yesterday, hits one off the bar. And if Stoke can score here, they'll be level again. So 
this is Kyron Hamilton. He's played in the free kick that led to Stokes' goal in the 70th minute. To tie the shootout. Gets it right up the middle. And we're tied 2-2 through three rounds of the shootout. Justin Glad, signed to a professional contract eight days ago. Steps up to try and put RSL in front here in the shootout. 2-2 after three rounds. No problem for Justin Glad and Real Salt Lake. Keeps the pressure on. One center back scores, now another center back will step up as Theo Vassell comes forward for Stoke City. 17 year old born in the Potteries. And again, he's been with Stoke since he was nine. Used to be a forward, so he's not entirely unfamiliar with this role. Vassell skies it. And Real Salt Lake is one shot away from picking up the extra point and what would be an emotional win and head in his shirt for Vassell, and he gets a hug from Tommy Deitch. Weston Hales wanted to go console his teammates, being told he can't. And again, you say these shootouts after a game may not be the best thing to have in a tournament, but the emotion of this is palpable, as is Vassell's frustration. So it's Aaron Herrera to give Real Salt Lake the shootout win. Yeah! Believe Real Salt Lake wins the shootout after tying the game at the last minute and they will pile on after a 4-2 shootout win. and despair and Real Salt Lake jubilant tonight they've got five points there leading group B after what may be the great escape with a 73rd minute goal and now the teams will shake hands after what was an emotional game and you hope a little uh, international diplomacy wins out here because it was a fun game to watch for us and hopefully for you at home. Real Salt Lake 2, Stoke City 2, the final score in this one. And the shootout to Real Salt Lake by that 4-2 margin. Again, the Group B standings now have Real Salt Lake in first place with five points. Stoke City in second with four. The LA Galaxy third with three. And Toronto FC last with none. Two games, two shootouts for us. And after what looked like a full round of successful handshakes, we've now got some disagreements between the teams and I don't think they're going to be uh, trading jerseys just yet. So an interesting note there. After uh, what looked like a decent handshake line. And Real Salt Lake uh, going to be very happy to come away with the extra point in the standings. 
will take tomorrow off. Colorado and Flamengo will play at 3 tomorrow afternoon. You can catch the results of that on MLSsoccer.com. But the next game we'll have comes Thursday night, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, where the New York Red Bulls take on Brazilian club Flamengo. And then again, we'll have the semifinals for you Friday night, 9.30 and 7.30. Or you can flip that, 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern. And Sunday at noon, the final from Toyota Stadium here in Frisco. Thanks to everyone involved in our broadcast tonight. Our whole crew, Dave Keevil, Steve Kerr, and our intrepid camera operator. Thanks to everyone involved in the GA Cup for setting us up. For everyone who was part of the show, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Thanks for watching tonight. The final score in a thriller. Real Salt Lake ties Stoke City with the last kick of the match. 2-2. Wins the shootout 4-2. Real Salt Lake first place in Group B. Wrapping up a hectic day two of the Generation Adidas Cup. RSL 2, Stoke 2. RSL wins the shootout. Good night from Frisco and a full moon.